This is the Rodecaster Pro 2, a very powerful podcast mixer that allows you to connect up to four microphones, four different wired headphones with their own mixes. You can connect in multiple ways via USB, record locally to an SD card, and there's even a built-in soundboard where you can play sound effects or music directly from the Rodecaster Pro. Now you can use this device to record with Riverside where you have up to four in-person guests and remote guests getting separate tracks for everyone, but it will take some hybrid recording techniques and we're gonna jump into that here on the Rodecaster Pro 2. First, let's take a look at the connections here on the Rodecaster Pro 2. There are the four microphone inputs labeled one through four. Keep that in mind because every microphone is gonna have different settings. There is an area for monitoring out. These you would connect to physical speakers. There are four headphone connections. So if you have four in-person guests, you can have them each wearing their own headphone. And here there are multiple USB, ethernet, and micro SD options. If you'd like to record locally to this device, all the separate tracks individually, insert a micro SD card into this slot, and then you can record right on this device. There is an ethernet port so you can connect to this device over your local network and even get firmware updates. And it also has built-in Wi-Fi, so you can just connect to the Wi-Fi network. This USB port you'll use for power. And here you actually have two separate USB ports for connecting to external devices. Typically, you'll only need one USB port. So we'll show you how to connect this to a computer, use that one USB port to record all four microphones locally in software, and to record your remote guests through Riverside. So I'm gonna plug this USB-C cord from the Rodecaster Pro 2 to the computer, and we'll plug in this power cable into the wall that came with the Rodecaster Pro 2. Plug any wired headphones you have here in the headphone connections, and we're gonna go ahead and plug in our four microphones here into the Rodecaster. Now we do have a variety of microphones plugged into this Rodecaster Pro 2 with a mix of condenser mics like the Shure Beta 87A, which you'll use different settings than something like the Shure SM7B. In case you were wondering, the Rodecaster Pro 2 is powerful enough to run a Shure SM7B without a cloud lifter or fed head in between, which is great. And it even lets you choose a specific microphone and it will automatically set certain gain and volume settings based on the microphone you're connecting, which is pretty cool. We'll turn it on using this red button on the back. Now, whatever computer you have the Rodecaster Pro 2 connected to, we would recommend downloading the Rode Central software. You can adjust all of the settings per channel, per mic, and USB outputs directly on the Rodecaster Pro 2 screen, but it's a little easier to see visually and manage in the software. We'll put a link where you can download the Rode Central software, which is completely free, down in the video description. You see, once it's started up, you'll see the Rodecaster Pro 2 appear in the software. And let's first go to Audio Setup. Here you'll see our four microphone inputs, the USB output and input, it can act either way. And there's also the sound effects channel or sound board. And those are these buttons here on the Rodecaster where you can load up sound effects and music. You can even connect Bluetooth devices if you would like to play music wirelessly into the board and that be recorded in a separate channel. Hitting the gear icon on one of the microphones brings up individual audio settings. And this is really powerful here on the Rodecaster Pro 2. I can actually scroll through all these different microphones and there are lots of presets for individual models, which is pretty amazing. If you have the RE20, you can literally select this and the Rodecaster Pro 2 knows the dB or gain level and whether or not it needs phantom power. And we even have the SM7B as one of the options as well. Here in this first channel, we actually have a condenser microphone connected. That's the Shure Beta 87A. And so I'll actually select condenser and you'll see phantom power automatically turns on when I select a condenser microphone as an option. Now the Rodecaster Pro does add some processing by default. I'm actually gonna turn processing off because I want the most raw audio recorded possible. If you'd like a more in-depth video going into all the processing and effects of the Rodecaster Pro 2, leave a comment below, we can cover that. But we wanna to get to the technical aspect of using this with Riverside and remote guests. There are some presets like Podcast Studio, but again, we're gonna turn these off. I can scroll to the different microphone inputs just using these arrows in the software, turn off processing and effects, and we'll do that for each input. Now that I've set up the microphone inputs with the varying microphones I have connected to the Rodecaster, I'm gonna jump into the audio routing settings. Here in the software, I'll go back and then choose device configuration. Under the system tab, you have things like MIDI connection, which is really just for advanced use cases, device options like the display on the Rodecaster Pro 2 and metering, but we're gonna to go to the output settings. Here under headphones, the Rodecaster Pro 2 makes it easy to adjust between high sensitivity and low sensitivity wired headphones. That means headphones like the Bayer Dynamic DT770 Pros, those are the headphones I use to podcast, these are considered low sensitivity headphones or they need more volume so you can hear properly. You would choose low sensitivity for connections that use those kinds of headphones. For high sensitivity, usually inexpensive headphones or even ones that came with some of your devices like Apple devices, you could choose high sensitivity for proper volume level. And of course you can adjust the volume level for each pair of headphones right here on the board. Next, we'll actually go to routing. Here you'll see the four pairs of headphones and you can choose what they will each hear. 
Choosing main mix means they will hear all of the in-person microphones, but they may not hear the remote guest through something like Riverside. For that, I'm gonna choose custom, and you'll see there's different volume levels for the four microphone inputs here locally, but I'm also going to choose the USB one option and raise that volume. This way, those wearing headphones connected to the Rodecaster Pro 2 will be able to hear the remote guests through Riverside. You'll need to do this for each of the headphones connected to the Rodecaster Pro 2. Now, because we don't have any speakers connected to the Rodecaster Pro 2, we don't need to adjust anything here, but the most important settings are here under USB 1. This setting will choose what channels are sent through the USB cable into your computer and then through Riverside to your remote guests. To make sure this is properly set, I would recommend going to the custom mix and turning up the volume on mics one through four. When you turn the volume levels up on mics one through four, that means your remote guests who might be tuning in through Riverside will hear all of your in-person guests. I would also keep the USB audio down because we don't want their audio from Riverside going through the Rodecaster Pro and then back to them, and that will create an echo and feedback, and you won't get a good Riverside recording either. So just raise the volume on channels one through four and leave the USB one volume down here under the custom settings. Now we're not gonna utilize the USB chat feature or the USB 2 port, because again, we only have one USB cable going from the Rodecaster Pro 2 to our computer. Going down to multi-track, this recording option would be if we're recording to a local SD card. Pre-fader means it will record the mic's volume levels without any of these fader adjustments affecting that volume. The safest way to run your recording is to set those gain levels of the microphones properly before you start recording and choose pre-fader. This way, if these faders go up and down during the recording, it won't affect the volume of that recording later. It's the same for the USB option here under multi-track. I would choose pre-fader. If you weren't sure if there was any processing going on to any of the microphone inputs, you can also choose to bypass processing and that will remove any of the effects that may have been set in the audio inputs. Now we're almost ready to record in Riverside, but we have to keep in mind that Riverside is going to get a mix of all four in-person microphones and that's going to all be in one track in Riverside. You will not get separate tracks for the four in-person microphones you're using. In order to get separate tracks for that and your remote guests, you'll need to either record locally to an SD card on the Rodecaster Pro 2, or you can use software like Audio Hijack to record those local tracks on your computer, as well as Riverside recording the mix down. To do that, I'm gonna open an Audio Hijack window here and choose an input device to record. Under device, I'm going to select the Rodecaster Pro 2 main. Remember, we're not using that chat feature right now, we're just doing the main device. If I expand this advanced column, you'll see there's an option for left channel and right channel. The numbering system gets a little weird here. Channels one and two is actually the full mix down left and right out of the Rodecaster Pro 2. So if you wanna record your channel one microphone only into this audio track, you actually need to choose input three for microphone one. So just think inputs one and two are skipped when you're trying to record into something like Audio Hijack, and you're gonna record input three for mic one, input four for mic two, five for mic three, six for mic four. The rest of the channels are dedicated to like the Bluetooth and built-in soundboard of the Rodecaster Pro 2, as well as USB audio. But again, if you're just trying to record the four in-person microphones, your Audio Hijack window should look something like this four individual input device recording blocks. You'll see the Rodecaster Pro 2 is selected for each, and I'm choosing the same input for the left channel and right channel for each microphone. So this chain right here is going to record microphone one. This chain will record microphone two by utilizing channels four on the board, and so on and so forth. When I start this session in Audio Hijack, it will be recording all four in-person microphones locally to my Mac using Audio Hijack, and I'll have a separate WAV file for each participant. I added this block to monitor the levels as we record, although that's not necessary, but you will need to add a recording block, and here you can customize what the file will be called. It might be wise to call it channel one, two, three, and four, so you can distinguish these audio files later. Again, Audio Hijack lets you record up to a wave 24-bit, and if you're recording audio only, you can choose 44.1 kilohertz. If you're also doing video, do 48 kilohertz and change those settings for each recording block, and you'll get that full uncompressed wave audio file for each of the four microphones connected to the Rodecaster Pro 2. If you'd like to learn more about Audio Hijack, we do have another hybrid recording video. We'll link it above and in the video description. I'm gonna to go to my Riverside Platform Studio here. I'm going to choose I'm using headphones because that's what's connected to the Rodecaster Pro 2. And here for my microphone and speaker input, for microphone, I'm going to choose the Rodecaster Pro 2 main, and I'm also going to choose that for my audio output. As you can see, Riverside does recognize that we're using the Rodecaster Pro, but I can dismiss that window and now I'll join the studio. Now, if we've set everything properly, I should see the volume bar under my name. 
go up and down when I talk into each of the four microphones connected to the Rodecaster Pro 2. Here's microphone one, check one, two. Now you can see that volume is a little low. I might want to adjust the gain on that microphone. Let me actually do that here on the Rodecaster Pro 2 myself. You'll see here the condenser settings and I can hit the plus button and increase the gain. And now you can see that microphone is looking a little more I like how we want it to, kind of hitting that yellow mark so it has decent volume. Now this is talking into channel two. This is the Shure SM7B. Channel three is the Audio-Technica ATR2100X. And on channel four, we have the Samson Q2U microphone. So as you can see, volume was a little hot there on the Samson Q2U. So I might hit that fourth channel. Let me lower the gain a little bit. And that should be a little closer to how we'd like it. So as you can see, Riverside is getting audio signal from all four of our in-person microphones. That means when a guest joins the studio, they will be able to hear all four of these as well. Now let's invite a guest and make sure that we can hear that guest through the Rodecaster Pro 2 headphones and that they'll be recorded. I'll copy my guest link here in the studio. Now I'm gonna join as a guest. The guest is using wired headphones and I'm choosing a separate audio input and output device here as the guest just to make sure everything's working. Now those in person wearing headphones connected to the Rodecaster Pro 2 should be able to hear this remote guest in their headphones. Check one, two, good to go. Hearing the remote guest through the headphones of the Rodecaster Pro 2. Now I'm gonna put on headphones connected to the guest audio interface and I should be able to hear all four in person microphones into this pair of headphones. Check one, two. And I'm good to go. The guest headphones can hear all four in-person microphones in their headphones. So now I'm ready to start recording. I'm gonna hit record here in the Riverside studio. And I'm also going to record in Audio Hijack for local recordings of the four in-person microphones. Although you could record to an SD card on the Rodecaster Pro 2 and you'll get separate tracks that way as well. And I'm also going to hit record here in Audio Hijack. Now let's talk in each of the four microphones and make sure we have recordings of everything and we're good to go. Here's microphone one, and you can see the audio and audio hijack for microphone one going up and down, meaning it's recording locally. Here's microphone two, the Shure SM7B. I can see it here in audio hijack. Here's microphone three, the Audio-Technica ATR2100X. And here's microphone four, the Samson Q2U. So audio hijack is recording my four in-person microphones locally to their each individual wave files. And Riverside is recording a mix down of those four in-person microphones and the, any remote guests that I've invited. I'm getting a local recording of each of their audio and video isolated so I can edit it all together later. And when you're ready to put it all together from Riverside, you can download that mix down file if you'd like it for reference, but you'll download the individual audio and video files for your remote guests. Then for anyone that was recording in person, you would use the WAV files that were recorded in Audio Hijack or the files on the SD card that was recorded into the Rodecaster Pro 2. Put those all into your editing software of choice and you have separate audio tracks for all of your in-person and remote guests all through the Rodecaster Pro 2 mixer. If you're having any issues with this, leave a comment below. We'll try to help you there. But go back and make sure your routing settings are correct in the Rode Central software. Again, it can be a little difficult to see those settings on the little screen of the Rodecaster Pro 2. So I encourage you to download that software to your computer so you can adjust those settings there. But if everything is set properly, you can use the Rodecaster Pro 2 to record all four microphones locally. Your remote guests will hear those microphones and you can use Riverside to record everyone, the remote guests and a mix down of your in-person guests and you can edit it all later. And if you'd like to learn more about using Riverside and our text-based editor where you can edit your video content or audio content by transcription, delete words or full sentences and edit the audio and video that way. We'll put a link to that video above and in the description. Hit that like button, subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.